What's up, YouTube? Hope everybody's having an awesome afternoon. Uh, so we did have some fun little, get that light a little better. We did have some fun uh, recording complications the other day where I went through a video, recorded it, uh, up to tape, or uploaded it to the editing software, tried to, to cut back on the time as much as possible, had a lot of really great feedback from everybody that it was really choppy, hard to follow. So I've decided I am not going to shorten any videos from now on. Like all the leagues that I upload are going to be the full uncut league. Um, got a lot of really great people reaching out saying like they enjoy watching a match at a time, watch a match, uh, go do something else, come back, watch another match. And I think that's really great because it means I don't have to cut into what I'm saying, what I'm thinking about uh, as I'm going through a match. So I think that's going to be a, a solid way to go from now on. Just let people, um, let people watch at their own pace. And a lot of people I know speed it up to like one and a half, two times or whatever, if they want to shorten the length of the video. And I'm going to leave that up to the viewer to do. I'm not going to try to do it on the front end and adjust anything on my side. So hopefully that'll help keep things stable going forward. But as always, it's good to experiment around, see if something works before just like writing it off. So that's what we're going to roll with. The league today running through obviously some, some Demir, uh, no Oculus. I wanted to try out a couple changes in the non Oculus build, see how it felt. For example, uh, cut down on the spell pierces, went up a long goodbye, a good little uncounterable answer into opposing Oculus or opposing frogs. So definitely expecting the mirror. Uh, the Orcish Bowmasters are in here. We tried out the Ledger Shredders in the Oculus build where I think it's got a lot more, uh, a lot more usefulness because not only are you discarding the Oculus to a potential Ledger Shredder trigger, but you have the ability to more proactively trigger connive with your extra can trips on Earth, things like that. Don't really have that, um, that ability in this build, so I think it's a little less consistent. Trying out the third Harbinger of the season, the main. I have been really impressed with Harbinger recently, so I'm hoping going up a copy will kind of lead to a few more game one wins as well as, or game one free wins, as well as free up a sideboard slot, which in this case is for an extra piece of grave hate I'm testing. If you'll notice on the right side at the very bottom, I've got this full like four one of uh, grave hate split. So one surgical extraction, one unlicensed hearse, one Nile spell bomb, one ghost vacuum. And it's because I haven't really found any that um, are really jumping out to me in multiple scenarios. I'll get into a bunch of matchups where, oh, I want surgical extraction against like the char belcher deck but i want unlicensed hearse and ghost vacuum against opposing merc tide decks but i want nihil spell bomb against like uh living end or i want whatever surgical against unearth decks or against gorios and it's just kind of like I'm not sure which one has the most utility for me right now. So I'm hoping playing a split will allow me to see different ones in different scenarios and see what, uh, what the common theme seems to be. Otherwise, uh, the only other change I made was dropping the toxic deluge from the main back to the side. And that was to make room for a second copy of cling to dust in the main. Um, have been pretty high on cling to dust recently. Really good against like opposing unearth Oculus builds. So kind of want to see how that does. And yeah, we're just going to hop into it. No pun intended. So I'll see you back for round number one. All right. Here on the draw round number one against King Wa. Um, opening hands, not great. We do have a shoot the sheriff, a bowmaster. We have no counter spells. 
opponent has not revealed a companion. I might keep this just on the back of like, if it is another Murktide Tide opponent, maybe Cling to Dust in response to an Unearth is really good. Bowmaster, shoot the Sheriff. Yeah, we'll keep it and see what we're up against. Uh, as always, while we're waiting for this match to really kick underway, if you are enjoying the content, enjoying the commentary, feel free to leave a sub on the page. Doesn't cost you anything, just lets you know whenever a new video is posted so you can come check it out. Or just like today, we always take feedback from uh, other decks. So if there's something that you're really wanting to see, let me know in the comments down below. Preordain's pretty good pickup. Can't shoot the sheriff anything. So I think I'm just going to fire off this preordain. I could hold up cling to dust, but that seems meh. Um, opponent didn't play a one drop. So I might want to just take the pierce. I don't really want the fatal push. Maybe I should have bottomed that. Well, now I feel a lot better taking the Fatal Push if this is a frog deck. Now looks like it is. All right, so that basic swamp probably means they have a uh, Harbinger in hand. I think what I'm going to do is pass and go to push on their upkeep. Play around force of negation a little bit. This way I can hold up spell pierce in case like they have a spell pierce. But again, basic swamp, I'm assuming means they have a Harbinger of the Seas in hand. So we're going to catch an Unearth on a frog. Take that. Okay. So a little bit of a corner turning here. Opponent only showing one black or one blue mana, so they might not have counter spell. So I would really like to slam this Merc Tide next turn if possible. Should we hit over? Sink, sure. Um I'm just going to go for the Bowmasters. I kind of like the idea of maybe they have a Bowmasters and I like get them to fight over the Bowmaster here. But I'm still like pretty certain that they've got a Harbinger of the Seas in hand. Two, three, four, five. Here's my Merc Tide. And I think I'm just going to pass with Cling to Dust up. I'll save this sink. Here. Good draw. So now I'm just like sitting on cling shoot counter spell. The only thing I actually care about stopping is an Oculus, like a flying threat. And I can stop that uh fairly easily. Okay. 
Sure. And that's definitely the clunkiness of the Oculus build. Like when you have a really explosive start, the deck does a great job of getting out ahead of your opponent. But in a case like this where they couldn't get a sixth card in the yard uh, and weren't able to actually hard cast an Oculus or just couldn't find the land to hard cast or to counter spell or anything, it just gets really gummed up really quickly. So this is a matchup where I think the targeted interaction is a lot better because you really only care about unearth. They hard cast an Oculus, they hard cast an Oculus, but it's like, I don't even know if I want spell bomb, honestly, see how much I have to take out. Um, force negation, not a big fan of spell pierce. I don't really care for harbinger can come out. Bowmaster is a lot better against them than it is traditional Merc Tide just because they're on like minimum eight can trips instead of four. Hmm. I want to cut a Merc Tide because it's just like one of the best cards in the matchup. Maybe I've just got one too many. I could cut a frog on the draw. Frog's really good in the matchup, but frog on the draw is a little awkward because you don't really want to slam it into open mana. Um, especially with cards like Mystical Dispute, Stern Scolding, that can be really tempo positive against a frog. Hmm. They keep, yeah. I think I'm going to mulligan this one. We would rather have a second land. Like being able to deal with a frog is real nice, but that hand just like runs the risk of not doing anything after the frog. Um... Ditch the fatal push. Got a couple counters for frogs. Lead to the Gloom Lake. I know it doesn't make black, but clearly with my hand, I don't need black right now. And if I shock in Watery Grave, then they're more likely to just pass and not jam into a uh, counter spell. with our bow master slash flurry of counter spells up i'm not gonna flash a bow master into like was probably a bow master on their side I'll flash into this because if they want to counterspell this, that's great for me. It means they're not getting an Oculus this turn. Unless they like considered over exactly Oculus and had unearthed, but it's not that high. Oh, dark slick shores. Keep you, but I hate every moment of it. All 
All right. So at this point, priorities are kind of like countering Oculus, uh, countering Merc Tide. Which I'm fairly well equipped to do at the moment. I probably don't want to waste a counter spell on a Bowmaster. That's the other fun part of uh, the Oculus build is you run into these situations where like you've got Unearth in hand and maybe your Unearth targets also in hand and you just can't do anything with it. This is a Merc type. We're fighting over this. I'm going to mystical dispute. Save my spell snare for like a, a uh, shoot the sheriff on my Merc Tide. Mm. Thinking back, that's probably not the, the greatest play because now I risk them having an oculus or something that I can't stern scolding. We'll see what happens. Might be a pretty over aggressive Merc Tide. I'm just kind of hoping that they don't have that many ways of dealing with it. They just happen to have their shoot the sheriff. Just play our land drop. We were on a mulligan this game, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, spell bomb's fine. We want to go ahead and crack it. Oops. Probably like crack it on my upkeep. Gonna crack it. Well, if you're not cracking it, I don't really know what you're waiting for. Because if I have a Merc Tide, I'm just playing it out as a 4-4 right there, and I've got a pretty big uh, mana advantage. I say pretty big. One land. But in a game full of, like, spell snares and mystical disputes, one mana is a big deal. Finally got the ocular. All right. So I'm going to let the oculus resolve. Am I? Yeah. Let the oculus resolve. And I'm going to fight over it on their instep. Uh, this is because if they have an unearth, and I go for just like counter spell, they unearth and have spell snare for shoot the sheriff. Uh, my day is kind of wrecked. Pretty good one.
force of negation my ghost vacuum. Okay, well let's let's try to fight over this. Ghost vacuum resolves. Here's a frog. Gotta push. Ah, uh, into another Oculus. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So busy playing around or trying to play around Unearth. I probably should have just played around uh um hard casting another Oculus. Let's find out if this is a frog. Nope. That is. All right, do I want to just crack this vacuum now or do I want to go for getting one more spell out of them do I want to go for getting this psychic frog my gut is kind of telling me that going for the psychic frog is being a little greedy But at the same time, the only thing they can have that really punishes me is sink into stupor. So I think I'm going to pass. Save the land in hand because I'm going to get uh, a couple frogs. All right. I don't have revolt to kill the oculus that's a plus you don't have revolt i have revolt me me revolt <laughs> uh i guess opponent uh shame scooped that that fatal push there either way uh that was in fact the first game i have won Popping at Ghost Vacuum. So cool to finally get to do that. Cards interesting. I kind of pointed out in the Ledger Shredder video that I don't think it's good as a primary source of grave hate, but it is really good into like these Merc mirrors. So if you're expecting a bunch of those, then I think Ghost Vacuum is fine. Either way, catch you back for round number two. What's up? Back with round number two. On the play, unknown opponent, no companion revealed. I do have a preordain, so I think I'm going to keep it. Because all I really need out of this hand is a second land. Uh, that'll open up like Bowmaster, double counter. Then if I'm able to find a third land down the road, maybe in the first like I don't know, three, four draw steps, 
then a Harbinger could be a really good piece to kind of close out the game, lock it up. But it has a proactive game plan. Like, I usually like saying on the play, uh, in the blind, I really like looking for a hand with a frog and a counter spell and something like that. Harbinger kind of fills that role of frog in, in the blind with a hand like this. Just saying, I've got a plan to work towards. Let's see if we can make it happen. So don't want any of those because they don't say land. Now, if we end up just whiffing on land with uh, a draw for turn, a preordain, looking at two, another preordain. All right, well, that's just bad luck. Like, we saw what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards and just didn't see a land. is what it is we'll try to get some information about what we're up against to go into game two and three kind of looks like uh adnaz spy okay so we're up against oops all spells we get to see their deck list though that's a big positive Actual just OG oops all spells. They're gonna creeping chill. Narcomiba comes back. Narcomiba triggers Sword of the Meeks. They should have one, two. I'm missing a sword. They have another sword in hand. Oh, wait, no. They can sack the Pintad Prism to Salvage Titan. So, the way the deck wins, if you haven't seen it before, Dark Amoeba comes in, triggers Sword of the Meek. So, they get all their copies of Sword of the Meek back onto Dark Amoeba. Uh, they can then, like, exile three artifacts from the yard to put Salvage Titan into their hand and then sacrifice the Sword of the Meeks and the Pintad Prism in this case to cast the Salvage Titan. The Titan gives them their second creature of the turn, Balistrad Spy and Salvage Titan, which gets back all of their Venge Vines, plus the Creeping Chills that they had. So their hand is like another Creeping Chill, um, another Creeping Chill, a Narc Amoeba, Usually they play like three or no, two. So one in the deck, one in play, another sword of the meek. Or no, I just miscounted swords. I just can't count. Here's them getting back salvage titan, casting it, triggering all their venge vines, and we will scoop there. Unfortunate because this is a game we very well could have won if we'd found that second land. But good to know what we're up against going into game two. Consigned to memory stops like Balistrad, Spy, ETB, Spell Bomb, Surgical for stuff like um, Venge Vine. Mystical Disputes, okay, is just bad mana leak, especially when you want to take out pushes, shoots, goodbyes, all that stuff. Uh, Harbinger is okay. It's not great in the face of a bunch of like Pintad Prism effects. And then let me check Stern Scolding. So they've got two creatures. They've got Balistrad Spy and Undercity Informer. And I think Stern Scolding hits both of them. Yes. Stern Scolding does hit both of those. So I actually like Stern Scolding a little better than Mystical Dispute, but 
have to keep in mind that they can very easily um, shift post board to char belcher. So do I think four counter spell, three force is good enough to deal with char belcher? I think I probably just want to bring in a couple more disputes and call it a day. Since bad man elite can hit uh, any of their unearth creatures or any of their flip their entire library creatures and it can hit um, Char Belcher. Mm. I think I can do better. I really want to find a hand with Frog. Yeah, much better. Um, I want a hand with Frog so I can start working on like digging to more counter magic. Keep this throwback. Cling. Just start digging for like force and negation, stern scolding, any of that stuff. Um, the good thing about their deck is it is pretty heavy on pieces that they need for like actual combo purposes. So they end up having to cut a lot of interactive spots. Unless they just shave like half of their combo. So if they shave all the char belchers, they can go more in on like Veil vale of Summers. But all right. So option number one is just jam a frog, which I think is what I'm about right here. Option number two would be to aggressively go for like a spell snare on a pentad prism. But I think I want to get some cards rolling in. Pentad prism. Force negation would be like best draw. Pass with counter spell and spell snare. Still plenty of ways we just die, like Balistrade Spy plus uh, Veil vale of Summer or something like that. Part of me kind of wants to ditch the preordain. Just say like, I'm going all in on frog double counter spell. Try to speed up the clock, like try to end the game in the next two turns. Well, if they just have double Orm's Chant plus Balistrade Spy. Yep. Okay. Well, losing game one, definitely rough in a matchup like this.
can't cling to dust the narc amoeba can't cling to dust a sword or anything so i guess we really should have spent turn two going for spell snare on the pentad prism good to know But at the end of the day, like you're going to have a really tough time beating two pieces of like anti-interaction, the double orms chant with the combo piece and the mana to cast it. This is what turn four. So, so be it. See you back in round number three. All right, here we are. Round number three on the draw. Two lands. We'll roll with it. We got Spell Snare on the draw. We don't have black mana, but I only have one black card I actually need to cast. And we don't actually know if it matters yet. Siege Agantha, so... Okay, Commercial District means probably Storm. And this hand is exponentially better against Storm than it is against... Um, energy now it could still be like one of the naya energy variants like birthing ritual renegade rallier safi eric's daughter combo lists but i kind of feel like that deck was a one hit wonder like it showed up one weekend ran the table and then just like never did anything again Spiritane, try to find some more lands. As always with Storm, you just kind of have to focus on the, the rule of two. Whenever they've got like odd mana costs, like what's coming up, uh, three lands on turn three. You can more often than not just counter the first thing that they play and that kind of shuts down the turn. So having access to like spell pierce and spell snare on the, the draw, really, really nice. Out of land. On the bright side, opponent is going to think we're some like weird off meta mono blue deck. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Valakut Awakening. I think I'm just going to spell pierce this. Start working on getting stuff in the yard for Merc Tide. Plus, that kind of means they have at least one card in their deck that they don't, or hand that they don't want, unless they're just using it as a three mana draw one. I was say, if they have the ability to go off after the Rao gets countered, so be it. Uh, yeah, I really wish this Merc Tide were, a, or not the Merc Tide, but like one of these were a Force of Negation. I don't really care about the Glimpse, but I kind of don't want them to have a bunch of extra free mana next turn. And I would love to get down Murktide with two mana available in case I find a counter spell. Which alas, we do not, but at least got long goodbye for a Ral. Tony does nothing. We can flash in Bowmaster and make sure this is a two turn clock. Oh, 
That would be best case scenario. Unfortunately, when you put Storm into a corner like this, it kind of becomes they have to go for it. And when they have to go for it, then naturally they, they get to call your bluff. Last card, like a, a wish. Okay. Reach is fine ish. For ritual, yeah. Pretty fine. Do anything else? So let's go get an under city sewers. We're just trying to find a counter spell. Don't need fatal push. Breach can go. We'll bowmaster their face, untap, and kill the Rowl. is nine putting him on a, a one turn clock and i think i'm just gonna hold up the long goodbye to potentially kill another rowl in case they go like rins resolve into rowl plus something all right drew dead Love to see that. So, managing to steal a game against Storm that I don't think we necessarily deserve to steal there. Um, sideboarding against Storm. I don't like over sideboarding, like boarding in uh, all the grave hate and like all the consigned to memories. I feel like that's just overkill. A couple can sign is fine because it can hit Ruby Medallion. It can hit a Storm Trigger off of um, like Grape Shot. But usually if they're going for a Grape Shot, they have enough mana to flash it back. So it's not like an end-all, be-all play. And then like a Nihil Spellbomb just to nuke the yard for, um, for Past and Flame. Surgical Extraction on something like Wish can be really good. But I really don't want like more consigns and I don't want to tap off on turn two for unlicensed hearse. And if I'm not playing hearse on two, then like when are you playing hearse? I think that's a, a common theme when people are sideboarding that they don't really think about like, oh, I want to play. Um, I want to play unlicensed hearse against storm. OK, great. Are you tapping out on turn two for unlicensed hearse? Well, no, because I don't want my opponent to untap and kill me with like rituals and rowls and whatnot. Great. So if you're not tapping out on turn two, when are you playing that hearse? Like, are you tapping down on turn three to tap off counter spell? Are you tapping down on turn four with just like hearse uh, counter spell? Then is that hearse like actually impactful enough and kind of helps you think about sideboarding a little more critically flipping over a wish makes me assume that they don't have another land So Gloom Lake's not bad. I can just play out Nihil Spellbomb and pass. Uh, I don't think I'm going to crack it if they go for Strike It Rich or 
I don't think I'm going to go for the spell bomb just to stop them from going for strike it rich. Now, if they play a two mana spell here and I get to spell snare, then I'll consider it a little more. Probably still not since I need two lands. And if they pass, do I want to use it? I think I will if they, or with them passing. Make the redraw. Okay. Harbinger, really, really solid. I'm trying to wait till next turn to play the Harbinger. Uh, reason being, if I jam the Harbinger now, they've got the treasure to make red mana. So they can just, like, go off. They ritual, they'll have all the red mana they need. But if I wait till next turn, then I can Harbinger plus Spell Snare and be able to stop the ritual play. All right, we got a Veil of Summer. Yeah, you do. Uh, Rough, rough, rough. So now I just have to hope they whiff. But pretty unlikely. Now they've got the basic mountain. So best case scenario would be they pass the turn and I get to Harbinger and Spell Snare, like the one red spell they get to play. Flip. Oh. Really hope that was a desperation flip row. Janta's fine. Yeah. Love to see that. Little storm whiff. Now they're down to one red mana. They can hard cast Gigantha, which is a little unfortunate for the home team, but. Hard casting a Gigantha is a little bit. Spell snare this, because this means that they can't hard cast Gigantha this turn. Just like buying myself a, a turn. Try to force in the attack to see if I could get them to block so I could bowmaster down the rail. So they don't hit a red source. Means my sink into stupor is still in play. I Am I sinking Ral? No. 
really weird game. Like, could have just harbingered that one turn sooner. That would have made a, a pretty big difference. But at the same time, if I harbingered one turn sooner, I wouldn't have had black mana. So if I Bowmaster down a token, is that better than just double jump the frogs? Probably better to double jump the frogs and just kind of say like Merc Tide's not happening. Try to find counter spells and we'll attack with the Harbinger too. Because again, if they just block with the Rowl and I get to Bowmaster down the Rowl, that's not the worst thing in the world. to the Bowmaster. Preordain, see if we can find a counter spell. <laughs> there. Uh, then we'll just Bowmaster down the token. I guess I don't need to. I can wait. I'm just like counterspelling whatever red spell they put on the stack, especially now that I know I have another counterspell coming off the top. We'll see what Ral does. Counterspell the Awakening. Hmm. Okay, so let's Bowmaster down the Rowl before they have a chance to do anything. I do have lethal right now. Just ditch psychic frog, ditch the counter spell off the top, hop both my frogs, attack in. Or anything with Veil. They found the past in flames. Ah, oh, that's so gross. Their last card's Giganta. Ah, oh, that's so gross. So what do we counter that turn? We countered... They had to win the, the coin flip. To be able to kill the Harbinger. We countered Valakut Awakening. They drew Veil off of the Ral. Or they had Veil. Vale. 
Either way, gross sequence. But that's the way it goes sometimes. All right, grape shot for a whole mess. Oh, the blind veil of summer rip into to past in flames. Really not much I want to change up. I might like swap a bowmaster for a hearse on the play. I really don't want to bring in hearse and ghost vacuum. I think ghost vacuum just like doesn't exile quickly enough. Maybe I can find a hearse plus a, uh, a force. Yeah, this ain't doing it. Counterspell, a turn two play, but I've got no pressure. Uh, Keeping it, but it's that joyous Gloom Lake verge into sink into stupor. Kept seven with gemstone caverns. Got rid of a scalding torn. Go ahead and counter that. Keep both of those. But I need that land to be able to play frog next turn. I could just get basic island and that still turns on gloom lake Let's see if they flip I think I'm absolutely force negationing this. Like they didn't have a land last turn. I don't want them to have a land now. I give myself a chance to rip into a way to kill this Ral. You have to just like play frog, pass, threaten to like attack in and double discard into the row this turn, but. Starting off with pyretic rituals, terrifying. Okay, kind of dead. 
Probably not if they're shocking. What are we wishing for? What one card? I mean, it's got to be like Galvanic Relay. I think that's the only card that does anything. Glimpse, sure. Seems like kind of a a waste of a glimpse. All right, um, I could double attack in. Makes more sense to at least fly one of these frogs. All right, here's the Harbinger. That's all I got. Only one red mana available. It does shut off like past in flames. Well, not if they get to flip Ral. At least this veil doesn't do anything. So it's kind of a funny situation where I what they no doesn't show me what they got right. a card like them having to kill the harbinger means they don't get the mana reduction the frog sure I feel like I'm just missing cards left and right Hate to discard that spell snare. Kill the flip rowl. All right. Big brick, please. Start. Attacking with the Rowl makes sense. You're not blocking with it. That Giganta, sure. Uh, we'll go for the Undercity Sewers pre-combat. Try to find a counter spell or something. Not quite a counter spell. Left on top with the district. So it's either a land for Gigantha or a live spell, like a Rin's Resolve. Limps grape shot.
Desperate, desperate grape shot. Ah. Own it. You're literally killing me. This is one, two, three, four, five for the grape shot. This doesn't actually kill the frog if I discard my hand. I very much will discard my hand. Well, I guess they can kill it with the Rowl down tick. Hmm. So, damned if I do, damned if I don't. Because if I discard everything to the frog, then they rowl down tick, kill the frog, draw a card. I don't have a Merc Tide anymore. If I don't discard to the frog, then they get to rowl up tick and threaten ultimate next turn. So I think I have to discard. And make them down tick the Rowl. Because I just literally can't beat them. Getting all their free spells next turn. Yep. And they get to play the. Gigantha. I do get back my frog. Man. All right. Well, if you're ever curious, like, how do you win consistently with Storm? This is it. Don't think my opponent has bricked in an important spot of the match. But that's the way it goes. Uh, we'll go ahead and scoop it up here. They are going to have enough rituals to get back to, like, um, a wish for a big grape shot. I think they have a grape shot in the yard. So yeah, we are, we are dead. I could try to consign to memory the grape shot. The problem is my opponent's just got like so much mana production here that they're going to be able to just wish for like another grape shot and kill me with that. So rough one. Either way, be back in round number four. Back for round number four. Got to regroup after that rough one to storm. A little bit of a reactive hand here on the draw. It's amulet. Definitely could have made a good argument for force of negationing that amulet. I don't want to wait and see how things play out. Save a force for like a one ring. Four is fine. This is really good. If they end up 
trying to go for something here. Oh, no, it's going to Lotus Field. Okay, Strad's fine. Okay, let's think about options here. I can fetch and fatal push the Dryad. If they have a bounce land, they can still tighten next turn. So I probably need to hold up counter spell for a Titan. And then if they do nothing, then I can like fatal push the Dryad into turn, maybe cling to dust or something. Floor is fine. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take this. Go to instep before I fatal push anything. You have Delirium online for shifting woodland, so I got to keep an eye on that. But I do have Force of Negation to hopefully help, or not Force of Negation, Cling to Dust to hopefully help uh, any woodland shenanigans. I really don't want to copy a Dryad. I'd rather just like exile a card out of the yard and draw one. Let's hit Wolf Run. Merc Tide is pretty good. Probably plan on that next turn. Try to find like some more blue mana sources so I can Merc Tide plus counter spell next turn. Invested, sure. Love to see a summoner's packed here. Now, if we fight over a Titan, uh, we're gonna have to pay for pack next turn, which means I get just like a free turn of having Merc tied down. Yeah, really, really good exchange for us there. Dark Slick Shore. So I have had a moment this this league already where Dark Slick was worse, and I've had a moment that it's been better. And that's kind of funny. All right, so they got to pay for pack this turn. They can next turn shifting woodlands and copy the Titan or become a copy of the Titan. Uh, so I want to be able to have shoot the sheriff to kill the copy. Play out the the dark slick, even though I don't want to. Assuming this is Woodlands, copy the Titan.
Because if nothing else, Titan players are going to do a really good job of making sure that they know that you know that they're big-brained enough to do things like shifting Woodlands, copy a Titan in the yard. Like, oh, I get around your counter spells with my shifting Woodlands, copying my Titan. how how mindful I am how demure hit you in the face we'll just sit with this flooded strand in hand make them think we've got more interaction than we do but with counter spell force negation we should be pretty okay into most things We'll just use this counter or use this force negation. And they think they got us with the Titan to follow it up. And we say, ha ha. Is this, uh, what's his name? Big seven mana green dude. Or is this a one ring or? Titan. Go away. Go away, Titan. I love getting to be able to win those games without like having to use um, that force negation that we originally had. Like you don't have to force negation the amulet. You can save it. At the end of the day, the amulet doesn't kill you. Keep that in mind. Amulet's good, but the amulet doesn't kill you. The thing they cast off of the amulet does. Especially if it's a one ring. I'm going to put... Spell bomb down here in like the maybe category. I probably don't need it. Like cling to dust is probably fine. But I kind of like knowing that it exists. If they're heavy in on like the aftermath analyst plan, aftermath analyst and um shifting woodland then it can be okay to bring in some extra grave hate. Opponent kept their seven. Oh, uh, I don't think I'm keeping this either. I hate this. Think I have to keep it, but I hate it. I really like don't want to keep a hand without a counter spell or uh, a harbinger. But I can't really go down to four and hope to win realistically. So I do have a couple ideas for videos coming up. Um, 
Soltai Oculus. So a Soltai Merktide build, or not Merktide, but Soltai Abhorrent Oculus build with like uh, Grist and Abrupt Decay, stuff like that. I've got a Demir Shadow video with Oculus in the plans. We've got an over, a Bale Merc Overlord, I think that's the name, Overlord of the Bale Merc, something like that. Uh, video with it planned in Frog Tide. And I thought about doing like a pro and con video, like a uh, Frog Tide verse Froculus. It's kind of a. Oh, you're thinking about going to your next RCQ. Which version should you be playing? Kind of talk about play style differentiations and noticeable cards and play patterns. I don't know if that's something most people would be interested in or not. Cavern of Souls. Name Riot. Fortunately, we cannot Bowmaster down this Dryad, so Unforch. Hmm. Well, punished pretty heavily for not uh, replicating the consigned to memory. Mystical dispute was not on my radar. Good to know, though. and Bowmaster upstairs. Can't kill off this Dryad anyway, so... Okay. Vexing Bobble. That stops what? Force of negation and subtlety? Now what? That's right. You get to just make like ginormous dudes now. All right, we'll go to game three. Uh, consigned memory needs to be replicated. Got it. It's worse because, like, there was no reason not to replicate it there. Like a pretty free replicate. Bell's snare looks so bad. I'm just going to bring in a couple mystical, yeah, mystical dispute to fight over their mystical dispute. 
because one of their best ways in uh, interacting with Harbinger is, or not interacting with Harbinger, but interacting through Harbinger is going to be cast a one ring. So if they're using Mystical Dispute to follow up their one ring, then hopefully I can follow up my Harbinger. And ain't it. I think this is a trap hand. It's like I can consign a turn one amulet, maybe counterspell another amulet, but then I just lose to like a saga or... This is much better. I've got consigned for the amulet into a frog. Go with a preordain. Get an Undercity. Want a Bowmaster. Want more blue lands. Okay, Frog. Mm -hmm. Okay, really need to find a land. Not the land. Hmm. Hold up, replicated, consigned to memory. Lumra. What all does this say? Lumor's power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters, mill four cards and return all land cards from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So Lumra is going to enter. Lumra is going to get its ETB ability consigned. And we're going to go to our turn. I'm still not going to have... Another blue source. Hmm. All right. Just preordaining looking for like a force took way too long finding another blue source Okay. Well, that's better for us than most uh, outcomes. I 
I guess I want this consign. Got to discard two cards. Outgrow both of their things. Got a map. What are we mapping for? Like a saga. Go to war. Pretty good one. I'm gonna have to get another undercity. Keep the Merc Tide on top. We'll cling to dust. Yep, sure. That's a good one. We can attack in, try to force the Odawara, which they are not going to use for whatever reason. So, why does this thing have reach? Oh, that's stupid. So if I pass the turn, they Odawara the frog. Can't do that. I've got to just play out the frog or play out the Merc Tide here. So if they want to Odawara the Merc Tide... I get to keep the frog around, or they just have everything. Okay. Ugh. Go toward my frog. I have the land to back for seven instead of three or instead of six. Do I need a what? Another frog? Another frog or a uh, removal spell. Always the chance that they don't go uh, all in on the attack. Now, if they do put something on the stack here, like this analyst, I want to fetch off of my flooded strand to counter spell. I'm dead either way, but fetching off the flooded strand to counter spell gives the impression that this could be a fatal push. And if this is a fatal push and they make a bad attack, then I could just blow them out. Now, unfortunately, they've got this fifth land, so it doesn't matter. I can't outgrow the Lumra.
now they're free to attack with everything. But they didn't have Titan land, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it would have been a lot better to fetch for the land to counter spell because if I did have a fatal push and I counterspelled off of the lands that I had showing and didn't fetch with uh, the flooded strand, then I wouldn't be able to get a black source without fetching and shocking and just killing myself. So fetching up the basic island does a much better job of bluffing. Like, hey, I've got a fatal push. Don't attack into me. But roughly, either way, we'll still truck on to round number five. Okay. Round number five, let's see if we can get a little redemption, get a few play points back. On the draw, preordained, fatal push, bowmasters. See what we're up against. The mirror, the de mirror, nope. Overgrown tomb, gilded goose. My immediate assumption is we're up against some sort of spike deck. I know I saw spike playing like cat Yigra, some combo deck with that stuff recently. And that's about the only gilded goose deck I've seen. So I'm going to go with that until further notice. Soul tie. Blood gas. Blood gas means I no longer have any any ideas or expect. Actually, it still could be the same. I don't think blood gas is enough to to throw me off the trail yet. Island, Bowmaster down, some amount of blood gas. Try to find lands. Oh, I really wouldn't mind Harbinger. Yeah, I think land is just way more important right here. Or, uh, so we'll let Satoru enter. They have the Undercity, so we will exile the Blood Gas in response. Gain the life. They don't get to draw off of the Satoru. They are a Yigra deck. So, like, Cat Oven shenanigans are very possible. I really want to just long goodbye and kill the Satoru. I don't really like have to do it right now. I'm Hmm. I feel like this is one too many games in this league that our lands just haven't really functioned the way I wanted them to. Uh, 
like just one too many games that we didn't see the third land or the fourth land or the second blue source or whatever it was just a little sooner. Now, there's a chance it ends up not mattering. Because, funny enough, enough big Merc Tides, and you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. Cauldron Familiar is fine. They don't have a way to re or like sack it for value at the moment. Don't think I'm going to Bowmaster yet. Okay. So that should probably wrap it up just hit him in the face with a Merc Tide, double counter spell, hit him in the face with another Merc Tide. Said very, very optimistically. Overlord. Hard casting a Yigra. That's uh that's not resolving. I maybe I'm wrong. I feel like Spike's list wasn't running like Satoru in the blue. But I could very well be wrong on that. But if it wasn't, then that seems like a bit of an extreme shift to go to like Satoru, uh, the crabs. But this is also coming from somebody that like doesn't play the deck, so... Take it with a very, very aggressive grain of salt. They are malevolent rumble decks, so I kind of want to keep spell snare. Let's see, maybe I can find Spike's list real quick. Reasonable hand on the draw. Turn scolding into frog. Well, uh, let's see. Reuse. User combo. So, yeah, the original list was just Golgari. Which definitely looks a lot cleaner, but they each their own. And we'll counter a crab. Might as well, like, not give them a free engine to just find more things. Gorya's Vengeance. Okay, so Gorya's Vengeance gets back Yigra. Did they get turned to Hedron Crab? They 
do have a Venge Vine in the yard, so I would not have a second threat. Hope to see that. Little frog v crab race. Am I just jamming? I think I am just jamming Merc Tide here. Like, they just spend a turn overlording back a crab. Didn't cast anything off the crab. Uh, if they do hit a land next turn, they still can't Yigra. They don't have a Yigra in the yard. If they do find, like, a fetch land... And flip over a Yigra and have a Gorio's Vengeance for it. It's still like not doing anything. And if they don't have it, if they whiff here, then game's like, yeah, kind of just over. <laughs> So that could be a really aggressive line uh, there at the end, but I'm kind of hoping, I don't know, kind of hoping to force the issue. I feel like worst case scenario, they just have a removal spell for Merc or the Frog, in which case I still get to untap with like Spell Snare and Counter Spell and have a threat that's still alive. So I don't hate it one way or the other. Okay, so back here with our little mini wrap-up. What did we think of the deck overall? Uh, the three Harbingers, probably too many. I feel like I saw Harbinger in matchups that I didn't really care for Harbinger in. I saw, or did, still didn't see Harbinger in matchups. I did, like didn't see Harbinger against Amulet. Saw it twice against Storm, which is kind of awkward. But more than anything, it felt like it threw off my sideboarding. Like, every game kind of felt like I had a weird number of stuff to bring in versus take out. So I need to go back and recheck my sideboard map with some of the adjustments. So when I say sideboard map, something that helps me a lot is whenever I have a list that I think is kind of where I want it or I want to take it to a big event, I'll map out my board ins versus board outs uh, against most of the popular decks in the meta. For example, against Boros, I know I want Stern Scoldings in. Uh, I know I want Toxic Deluges in. And then I probably want like Nihil Spell Bomb, maybe Unlicensed Hearse, something like that. And I know I want to board out. Uh, Harbinger of the Seas, to some extent, if I'm on the play, I'll leave one in. If I'm on the draw, I'll take them all out. Uh, some number of Force and Negation. Uh, if I'm on the draw, I'll probably board out like a Frog, maybe a Merc Tide, because it's really bad to play these things when you can't hold up mana into like a, um, a Static Prison or some effect like that. Um, maybe spell pierce, maybe another force, but like you can see my board outs and my board ends aren't aligned here, which means I'm either overboarding for the matchup or I need to find something better to take out. Like if I didn't have the harbinger in the main and this were just another spot that were decent into, uh, into Boros or another card that I knew I wanted to take out. It would make my sideboarding map easier. Uh, in the mirror right now. Let's see if we can reset this. I always hate how it kind of shifts over. Uh, in the mirror, I'm bringing in Mystical Disputes. I'm bringing in Stern Scoldings. 
uh, Ghost Vacuum, Her Spell Bomb, maybe Surgical, but I'm a little less excited on that one. And boarding out Harbingers for sure. Usually boarding out Spell Pierce. Uh, probably bringing out a couple copies of Force or something. And now I'm back to that same issue of like my sideboarding map is way, way, way off. So I've got a couple extra sideboard slots that could be devoted to something better or a different matchup. But either way, sideboard's just like way, way, way out of whack. Need to address that for whenever the next league is and reconvene. So I do think leagues like this, even though they're not a 4-1 or 5-0 or some big like astronomical breakthrough in deck building, I think they're really important to showcase like the thought process behind narrowing down the cards in your list seeing how things, when you try out, they don't work uh, the way you want them to. Um, see what happens when variance goes against you, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this is a fun reminder to stay humble and uh, keep at it because that's all it comes down to at the end of the day. Other than that, I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your evening. Stay safe. Enjoy some good food and company. I'll catch y'all back live later. Adios for now.